Authority. His question is on the unused factory space along Route 125. Starting with the uh, starting with the first Bush administration, uh, we started the experiment of offshoring jobs. And now we have six empty factory buildings that I know of in this area. You just start at 125 with the Merrimack Valley Works, and you go all the way up across the railroad tracks, and there's over two million square feet of empty factory space. And I was, and the Northern Paper Mills have failed, and they've been put out of business. And I feel if we export any more jobs, that the recovery is going to fail. We're not going to be able to recover from it because we're just not manufacturing anything in this country. And I want to know what are you doing as a congressman to level this playing field? I mean, right now, the most promising company in Massachusetts, 123 Batteries, had to set up their plant in China because they couldn't get financing in the U.S. It, you know, there's a, there's a two-pronged solution to, to what you're saying. First of all, we've got to remain, as a state, competitive. Uh, on the federal level, and let me, uh, for, for example, uh, I think most people view our state as, as financially friendly because we don't have an income or sales tax. You know, our corporate tax rates, I think, are the top three highest in the nation. That's a deterrent for uh, business owners to come here. I've talked to medical device companies, for example, who do a lot of R&D uh, out of Cambridge. They get the PC out of Cambridge. Uh, and, and we struggle to compete with that, even though we are 30 miles, 35 miles away. Uh, we've got to do a better job as a state of trying to bring companies to New Hampshire. But on the federal level, again, you know, this part of my earlier answer applies. Predictability is important. Reducing uh, the tax uh, liabilities to job creators is absolutely critical. And manufacturers are job creators. But right now, it is, it is, it is, it is more expensive for them to manufacture here than it is in China or India. That, that is a huge, significant problem. Now, we've got a diplomatic role to play with China, uh, but we have to recognize that we are not competitive in the, in the nation, in the, in the world, when it comes to uh, the cost of barriers. The three highest cost uh, contributors to this decision of an employer are Taxes, health care, and energy costs. If you think about a manufacturing plant, how much energy a manufacturing plant utilizes. <clears throat> we have amongst the highest energy costs uh, in the country right here in New England. And it goes back to the earlier question about what do we want our energy policy <coughs> to be. That would be substantial if we had a true energy policy that generated more local energy to reduce the, that cost. That would be one significant component. Uh, and the second, again, is that health care cost is growing exponentially each and every year, and then finally tax policy. We have the workers. We have the skilled workforce. That's not the problem. But if we can deal with those three uh, pillars, we can bring more companies uh, uh, either back to uh, America, or at the very least, have them start growing again in America. And that's, that's really where the focus of, of Congress needs to be. But I don't hear that in leveling the international playing field. I mean, the well, jobs, part of it. No, the I jobs to... over here uh, where the water tower was, the chart, went over the chart <coughs> to Lockheed and China. Down the street over at Merrimack Valley, they went over to Italy and Ireland. The jobs over in Celestica, <coughs> over in the old deck building, those went to China. So right now, we don't have a level playing field. No, and that's when I talked about the, the diplomatic role that we have. We, we do have to have uh, a, a fairer system in place. We're, we're not with our own trade agreements. We are at a disadvantage, and that is part of the problem. But in terms of what we can affect right now is, in our budget, passing meaningful reforms that are going to get the attention of job creators and then bring them back here. But I haven't seen the Republicans take a position that would give the, give the president you know, or the State Department, the bargaining power to negotiate a better deal. If the Republicans well, uh, well, that's a deal. Okay. it would make a big difference when they're off okay. facing the Chinese well, negotiating. I'll, I'll, 
I'll relay that when I get back on Tuesday. Uh, maybe we're not doing a good enough job of communicating uh, what we're asking of the President, but we have been asking since I've been a member uh, of Congress for the last two and a half months, we as a House have been asking the President to address these particular issues. Uh, we just had a, uh, a manufacturing and jobs uh, uh, fair in, in Washington last week, hosted by the Speaker of the House, with manufacturers and job creators asking them, what are the things you need us to do in order to entice you to come back from, to our country or expand in our country? Uh, maybe part of the issue is we've got to communicate that better to you. So if you'd like, uh, if I can get your email, I'll send you exactly uh, what came out of uh, that meeting just last week. There was, uh, I think, hundreds, uh, I think it was about five, 600 employers that, that met with House Republicans and, and House Democrats who were invited as well. Uh, to say specifically what it is that they needed us to do. So I'll get you a copy of that, uh, uh, that event and what came out of that event. Uh, and we are asking the President to partner with us in making those things happen. I know it's a few minutes after 8, uh, so why don't we do another question and then uh, we can wrap it up. We would like to 